Hey guys, so what's been happening in the hobby this week? Well, I thought we'd have a little bit of a chat about uh, slaying the grey, as it were. Uh, that term gets thrown around an awful lot in our hobby, and uh, I thought we'd have a little bit of a chat about what that actually means, and maybe some, I guess, constructive, you know, approaches, or uh, just some ways in which you can actually tackle doing just that, which is painting your un unpainted models that are sitting in a pile somewhere. Some people call it the pile of shame, some people call it the pile of potential, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, these models that we have sitting around unpainted and unassembled generally, or sometimes they're assembled, um, we don't get a chance to paint all of it, right? It just sits there. And so um, I think that there is value in going back and painting that. And I thought we could just have a bit of a discussion on, yeah, some approaches to actually doing that because you don't often get to hear this type of discussion. It's often just, you know, to do it, but you know, how do you really go ahead and do that and get motivated to do it when it's like an older idea, an older project and so on, and um, all those type of things that go into it. So I thought we'd, we'd do that. And while we do that, um, I've got this uh, Nida Khanum here for, from Stormcast. And you know, this is a model that has been sitting in my, uh, you know, unpainted pile. And I thought that uh, for this exercise, I'd go back and paint this in my custom color scheme, which you can see all of the links to how to paint my custom color scheme are in the description and I'll put the uh, how to paint a Vindicta in the top right hand corner now. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in any of the color scheme that I'm doing, you can uh, take a look at that and uh, follow along. So yeah, this model is one that I haven't planned to, to paint and it was just sitting there and I thought, you know what, this is a good chance to, you know, put this into practice and, uh, you know, do it live so that you get to see um, I guess my own experience with doing this, with tackling that unpainted pile. This is a model that I, that I, I guess, am planning to use at some point, but have no intention of using it right now. And we're going to go into this more, but that's part of the point. Is um, a little bit like my other talks on, you know, uh, resetting your palette and painting a model just for painting's sake. That follows along with this uh, this talk we're doing now. And so the models that you paint in that, in that pile of shame may or may not be models that you're going to use straight away, but we'll get into that in a second. So anyway, um, let's uh, get into it. I'll uh, go ahead and uh, show you some sped up footage of this, uh, this Night Arcanum and we'll have a little chat. Yeah, so what do we actually mean when, when we say pile of shame? Well, for my definition of it, I guess it's any model that you've purchased, you know, bought or otherwise, that you have an intention of painting, playing with, or in some way, shape or form using. Okay, so for me, your pile of shame is that. That means that any models that you get, let's say in a box, like a starter box, uh, we'll use the Indominus uh, 40k box for example. Um, let's say you want to do Space Marines and you have no intention of doing Necrons, but they come with the box. Well those Necrons don't count, in my opinion, to your pile of shame. Uh, you had no intention of, of, um, of painting them, you're not interested in them, they just are sort of superfluous elements to your hobby. They're, they're just background noise and they don't really count. And there's a few reasons why I believe that's the case, um, which we're going to go into in a second, and it's a psychological factor of, of the pile of shame and what it actually means for you and the reasons why it is positive to go ahead and, and, and complete some of these things. And um, um, you know, so for me, those don't count. You're only looking at the things which you bought, which you intended at some point to play with paint and so on, um, or at least add to your collection, like this Knight Arcanum. Um, obviously in the rules right now, he's not the best wizard choice for Stormcast, so I had no real intention of using him straight away, but I still wanted him in the collection to paint him, uh, because in the end, um, you know, as we all know, Rule books change, codexes, army books change, and he the, the, that that Knight Arcanum certainly could end up being uh, a useful uh, character in an army. So there's no reason not to paint it. Um, it can also be proxied in as like a you know an allied uh, Cities of Sigma uh, wizard, or use it as a Lord Arcanum, whatever. So you know that's the sort of example there. So if you're looking at all the all those um, unpainted. They can be unassembled or unpainted. I'm not including now the second half of this type of thing is your um, half painted or semi painted models. Now those I'm going to tackle in a separate discussion, which you'll get in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, where I'm, that's sort of like a secondary pile, something that's a little bit further along, and I don't really consider that to be part of this, you know, slay the grey pile of shame. We're just looking at the things that are either put together, unassembled, that have no paint on them, that are that are not you've never spent any real time except for building at all on them, right? So 
that's that's where we're going to begin with this. And you know, I chose the night I can't. You might choose something else. And you know. We all have varying degrees of, of, of this pile. They can be from a few models to a lot, okay? And, you know, so why is it a good idea to go back and, and, and paint these? Well, the first reason is, is why I like to separate that out. Uh, and it's a good mental exercise for you to think about your own collections and start separating out that if in, in that definition. And the reason why is because every time you choose to do something in this hobby whether you realize it or not you're mentally writing a contract or like you know you're taking on a job like like think about it like being a freelancer or something like that in an industry right and you've accepted a job but then you don't complete it okay somewhere in your mind your mind knows that you haven't started that project or you haven't done that and and it's and it's cataloging it right and you're building up a sort of a, a hobby debt every time you do this okay and so you're building up that pile of shame of the intended models that you, you you were going to use or at least add to your collection are just sitting there in a, in a in an open state in your mind so that they're not they're not there's no completion there and this is building up a certain kind of psychological effect and I think that it has something to do with when you get hobby fatigue a lot of people will assign that type of thing or burnout to um, you know unrealistic uh, I guess standards or goal or, or sort of um, you know implied sort of uh, standards that you put on yourself you know it could be painting standard it could be you know a gaming level that you want to attain all those type of things that you put on yourself and, and that can lead to stress and so on and anxiety and then you sort of become immobile and you stop doing it right um, these are these are all quite quite um, you know common factors that, that, that affect uh, creative people not just hobbyists and it is something to consider but it's not really I believe not at the core of what's going on I think that you're actually building up this 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 sort of bank of debt of open projects and it's weighing you down and so one way to tackle this is really to you have to go back and paint that stuff either that or you got to sell it or you got to get rid of it or you gotta do something with it but you can't leave it in that state only of the things that are intended you got to do something with it I would say not to sell it because these things as I said the games go around you might come later I mean you look at me I took it like a sort of like a 10 year odd you know sort of break from regular gaming and, and painting and so on but now I'm back in it you know and, and I have all those old models that I can go back and grab and so on and, and reconnect you know so you never know when you're going to come back to this hobby so selling them off and all that sort of thing I, I wouldn't suggest is, is, is a great idea but really the only choice as far as I can tell but then you know I'm, I'm a bit of a workaholic in this way I, I, I go back and I actually try to complete it because I no matter how long it takes you you should you should I think it has value and um, you know just chipping away at that is going to help you mentally so you know that's that's the first part of this is that you know ta tackling these projects now I wouldn't say that you should just stop everything and go back and just only focus on that not at all um, you know part of the love of this hobby is moving forward the fresh new things you know it gives us that endorphin hit all those things uh, I would not suggest just stopping your, your current projects to go work on other ones that you that you bought that you hadn't started but what I will say is just like re refreshing your palette in that talk where I talked about doing a little singular model for painting sake as a refresher I would sprinkle um, some of your unpainted stuff and uh, older project ideas that you had or, or collections or units you wanted to add uh, sprinkle them in, in between projects just like the refresher one is so you're getting a different value out of this so you're going to get the sense of satisfaction of completion but what you're really going to be getting out of this which is most important is a closure to that project and you're, you're lifting a certain amount of psychological weight off your back and, and that's something that's um, you know really crucial and I don't really I haven't really heard too many people talking about this particular idea but I, I believe it's real and I believe it's something that affects us even if you don't see yourself as a completionist or a or particularly a workaholic like like I, I might do or whatever um, it is still there in the background and I think you'll find that if you go back and you finish that that um that you know that model off you will actually find yourself feeling pretty satisfied with yourself and you you start to get that just like with the refresher model and so on you start to get a new sort of vitality a new invigoration of love of the hobby and of a passion for it and uh, you might find yourself uh, making a little bit easier for you on the next one you know because you'll have established some routines you'll be getting into a bit more of a rigorous sort of uh, approach to, to finishing your, your your miniatures and I think that that's got real value there and, and, a, and a real uh, positive move and so 
the next sort of stages of this, you know, in terms of that is they don't always have to be for a current army. It can just be adding to a collection. It's nice if it is, if you've got something that, that would work in a current list, sort of like this Knight Arcanum, I can use it. That's obviously more beneficial. I would choose those things first. Anything that's current or that it, that does have a part to play because the, sh the most surefire way of uh, enriching your hobby experience is to then have a game with the thing. I mean, that's the point, right? Even if you're just a painter, you know, you get a few mates together and you get to have that one game, even if it's one game a year, and you get to use that thing that you just paint, painted, lovingly painted, especially if it came from that pile of gray and you get to actually have a little bit of a go with it, that, that completes the circle and you're going to now feel much better and you're going to probably get re-inspired to do something else a new thing that could be a whole new project and you have a whole nother another problem there but that's okay as i said this isn't about stopping that that's part of the journey too but we but sprinkling these in you're going to slowly reduce what you've got sitting there that also um so quite a while ago i talked about fomo one of the talks a long time ago and um this will help you with that type of uh, symptom as well it's going to increase your willpower and, and your ability to hold yourself back and not just go and buy, buy, buy all the time. So it also protects you against FOMO and th th those types of things as well. So you're not, you know, impulse buying and all that kind of thing because you're, you know, you've got things you can work on uh, and 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 do. And so by again this this modulation of of um, of approaches to your to your workflow to your hobby. So sometimes you know you you sprinkle that in. It might be a unit. It might be a single character. You know putting that in between those current projects, you know, it's building that collection. And then you never know, the, the rules come around and suddenly those units are, are great again. And there you go, you've got them painted. So you can now go ahead and start playing with them straight away and get that, that value out of that thing that you bought a long time ago. Um, yeah, so I really feel like this type of thing of just adding it in every now and again is really gonna help you. And it's going to increase overall your ability to get things done. And I think that that's just a positive all around, no matter how you see yourself, whether you see yourself as just a painter or, or, or just a gamer or somewhere in the middle or whatever it is, whatever, whatever type of hobbyist you see yourself as, or even you see yourself as an artist and not as those things. Um, either way, completing things is is obviously good and and i think yeah the real value for coming back to the main point is that it's um taking some psychological weight off your shoulders and i think that's where the the, the best bit of this is and uh, i certainly feel it when i do it when i see myself reducing that that pile um you know it, it definitely works now some strategies some approaches to attacking this okay so you're seeing the, the knight of Carnum here obviously this is going into an army that I've designed to be a very easy color scheme to do. So um, part of that is maybe choosing some some paint schemes or some um, you know approaches that are going to be a little easier to complete. That's that's another aspect to this. Hopefully that that gray project you've got uh, doesn't require you to you know do a hundred layers of, of shading and highlighting on it try to pick something that's a little bit more uh, completable a little bit like the refresher model you don't want it to be something that's going to be very labored and take a long time it does need to have i guess a duration to it so again you're probably going to be setting aside time for this so let's say you might give yourself a week or two weeks or whatever to complete it whatever it might be and and then get it done so it does have to be a completable uh, project just like the refresher model it shouldn't be something that continues on and on and on so you you do want to maybe alter your expectations as to what you're going to get done with this particular you know unpainted model or, or, or unit or whatever it needs to have a completable uh, end point and that's probably the final part of this is to treat it very similar to the refresher model you want to make sure you can complete it and that should help uh, move things along and get you really into this this practice and if you keep doing it over a year or over two years you're going to find that gray pile reducing and you might find yourself as I said it's arming you against FOMO you might find yourself buying less and using more of the miniatures that you actually have and that might actually you know do a lot of great things for you so I think they're the main aspects to this that that I would say are probably the most beneficial or the most actionable here you know time frame keeping it limited, um, you know, choosing something that's that's finishable, you know, adding to a collection, existing collection, maybe even it goes into an army list, but all of those sorts of things I think are gonna help you the most in getting uh, best value out, out, of, out of this idea. So yeah, they're, they're basically my thoughts. I think that that's uh, a great way to begin. Let's see how I've gone with my uh, Nidarkhanum. 
So there's some of my thoughts on uh, slaying the gray, as it were, and um, I hope that's helped. So let's see how I've gone. So yeah, I mean, you know, this little guy may or may not in, end up in a, in a list sometime, but I'm really happy that I got him done and it's one less model in my pile, right? And, um, you know, it was a lot of fun. Just a nice, simple color scheme, nice and quick, easy to do, um, you know, and it gives you that sense of satisfaction and completion and, and, and reducing that pile. And it's one less psychological, I guess, weight on me uh, moving forward. So that's really cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy with it. I'll leave you an overview of, of this, like a nicer picture and so on with a paint list. And... Um, uh, so you can see how I've gone uh, but otherwise yeah that's pretty much it I hope you've uh, got something out of this and uh, you can use that to you know help uh, target your own I guess plan towards uh, reducing that that gray pile that you've got and uh, you know get more out of your minis so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this please hit that like button subscribe button it really helps me out and I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one